Nebraska baseball? Um, Evan, the season is here. It's been uh, almost a year since Nebraska baseball has played a baseball game. They're going to play 44, scheduled to play 44 Big Ten games, no Big Ten tournament, all kinds of new players, aggressive recruiting staff. Seems to be the best offensive potential in a long time. Here's where I'll start. Um, Will Bolt did not really have a year one. Most of the time, year ones are built, are, are you know, about establishing culture, being who you're going to be as a program. Is this going to be that kind of typical year one, or is this a, is this a year one that can be more special than that? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, first of all, it's interesting because they, they lose the season in mid-March almost a year ago today, a week of shy of that. And like as disappointing as that was, like last year's Nebraska team was not probably going to contend for a regional. I don't think their, their pitching wasn't very good. They were figuring a lot of things out. They were off to a, a kind of a rough start against some good opponents. Um, but they use that extended off season to reshape the roster. And I think what's interesting about how they did it was not just, it wasn't like Nebraska basketball where it's everybody who's different. They, they add 16 guys, they lose 15 and almost universally those uh, swaps occurred kind of at the, at the bottom end of the roster. Most of the guys who left were guys who weren't playing a ton uh, anyway. And the guys they brought in are guys who probably will play right. uh, fairly key roles here sooner rather than later. So like they, obviously you, you don't want to lose a season, but I think what they gained from the off season relative to what they lost really thrust this program into a more interesting place. And you, and you see the preseason coaches poll comes out uh, earlier this week and Nebraska is not in the top six. I, I would argue that's because, in this climate of college baseball where every se- most seniors are coming back, it seems like in this climate when the shortened draft, MLB draft, uh, really forced a lot of guys back to school, you're seeing a lot of teams that are very similar, whereas Nebraska is quite a bit different. They have a, their four-game rotation this weekend. Three of those guys have never pitched uh, or have never started for Nebraska. Their bullpen is totally different than last year. They're probably going to start two freshmen on the infield. And so, I mean, I, I'm – obviously following it pretty closely. I feel like they've upgraded in most of those areas. And that's why I feel like they can take some big steps forward. But if you're kind of looking at this from a national perspective and you look at the league, Nebraska is more of a, of an unknown quantity than I think what you see elsewhere. So to me, these first couple of weekends are really interesting. These teams that Nebraska plays are teams they should have some success against. And if they do, I think that sets the tone for what could be a fun season for them. If they don't, Like it's tough because it's just league only. This isn't a non-conference situation. You know, in a typical year, Nebraska is playing in mid-February and maybe they split their first eight games and, you know, whatever. Like that's, that's, you're still off to a good start because you're playing good non-conference teams. But if you split against Purdue, which is, I think, one of the the worst uh, teams in the Big Ten, I mean, that, that already is putting you behind the eight ball that you just need to win a bunch of games going forward. So it'll be a really interesting first couple of weekends, I think. And, um, yeah, I, I, I believe like the guys they added were upgrades. And, and so I think, uh, you know, they're going to be in contention this season. Where are the, where's, where are they strongest? Uh, offense as I've gone through the, the different teams in the league, like a lot of teams have arms and every, everybody's deeper. Like, that's the thing. Like you, you can look at a team, any team and say, Oh, they're deeper. They're better than they've ever been. Well, that's the case for everybody in college baseball for all the reasons that I put out there. But when you have, especially in the Big Ten, these four-game weekends, a uh, seven-inning game followed by a nine-inning nine inning game and a doubleheader, I mean, everybody's going to be reaching down into their bullpen. And I think the guys that Nebraska added um, are, are the types that can, can win some games and score some runs for them. I mean, the last two or three years, Nebraska will have its top five or six hitters in a, in a lineup that are pretty good. But man, that bottom third is just a revolving door of guys that they hope stick, that they hope stick, and that that rarely have done so. And they actually have guys now, I think, 10, 11, 12 deep, where you could say, you know, these guys can can get some hits for you and, and can win some games. So that's a big difference. And 
I guess the other thing I would add is when you look at what Nebraska has done in the postseason, and we've made a lot of it over the years where, where they've just flamed out, whether that's the Big Ten tournament, whether that's the regionals, a lot of that's because they haven't had the depth. They might have that ace. They might even have the number two guy. They might have a couple of good hitters or, you know, big boppers, but they haven't, once you fit that second and third game in a series, like they just kind of run out and they, and they don't have that, the depth that you see a lot of the really good teams in college baseball have. So it seems like for the first time in a while, they actually do have that. Um, and we can go through some of the names if you want, but they, they their infields a lot better. Their outfield's incredibly deep. Mojo Haggies in his like 12th season at Nebraska. Now it seems like, <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. And, and the way Will Bolt structures his offense is different from Erstad too. I'm not sure how much the, the casual fan kind of dives into that, but Erstad was big on kind of that major league approach where, where guys would come in and they'd take care of their business. And, you know, he would, Erstad would encourage guys to approach the game like he did, be, be good at everything, be a well-rounded player. Will Bolt's much more about guys having defined specialized roles you know, you're, you're good at putting the ball in play. You're going to be a table setter. You're going to be a speed guy. You're going to be a, a gap to gap hitter. So don't try to, you know, swing out of your shoes for home runs and things like that. So I'll be really interested to see how that affects some of the existing guys like, like Mojo Haggy. Like he was a guy in 2019 who tried to be an all around player and he hit some home runs, but Will Bolton, his staff see this guy as someone who's going to be a really effective bunter somebody who should be putting the ball in play and and pressuring a defense. So like we didn't really get to see last year, what bolts approach, how that would affect some of the the Husker hitters. And I think this year we're finally going to get a sense of what that looks like. And I think it's going to be, you know, pretty potent, especially based on what you saw uh, when he was an assistant at Nebraska in the early 2010s. I mean, that was, there were a lot of dynamic offenses there and he was a big reason for that. So, uh, so I guess that's something else here to watch here. These first few weekends for sure. There's a Sam and, and Evan, there's a, there's an inherent disadvantage obviously for, for Northern teams in college baseball who, you know, typically go South at the start of the year and come back, you know, one and six or whatever. Um, and I'm trying to think of the last time Nebraska was, you know, really got off to a good start, uh, and, you know, one byproduct of this scheduling situation is, you know, maybe this is the year where Nebraska really, truly gets off to a good start. I mean, it's, um, you know, I'm trying to remember the last time Nebraska was in the top 25, you know, in mid-March or at the end of March. And I'm not saying they're going to be there this year, but but I think there's a, a real chance to generate enthusiasm and momentum, you know, when you don't have to go down to uh, – to Arizona or Texas and, and play Arizona state or Oregon state, you know, the first two weeks of the year. I mean, it's, I think there's an opportunity here for Nebraska based on the schedule and the way, you know, the big 10 has set this up for this program to, to sort of, uh, you know, make a name for itself the first month of the season. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a, it's kind of a double-edged sword because in theory, yeah, Nebraska should start stronger but they're also kind of expected to start stronger with some of the teams that they're playing. Whereas, yeah, I mean, in the past, if Nebraska is going South, like last year, they opened at Baylor. They had a series at Arizona state. They won one out of three games in both of those series, but those wins would have greatly benefited their postseason resume as the season would have gone on. Whereas, you know, if they take three out of four against Purdue this weekend, if they, do the same even against Iowa and Ohio state the following weekend in Minnesota, like that still doesn't do a lot for you. You're just kind of uh, satisfying the bare minimum, I guess. Like you're, you're not really building a resume. You're just kind of giving, you're just not giving them a reason not to include you, if that makes sense. So like, I guess I, I made the point, not so much as a, as a resume builder, but just as sort of like a, uh, you know, with a young program and a lot of unproven guys, uh, yeah. it would seem to me an opportunity to, uh, you know, almost the old Bill Snyder, you know, scheduling model where you you persuade your guys that they're better than they are based on the competition that they play. And, um, you know, that's obviously not going to keep you afloat for forever, but, you know, it, it just seems like the, the rare season in the last five or 10 years where Nebraska, uh, you know, might get off to a really good start. 
It's also yeah. known as the Dana Altman model at Creighton Basketball. <laughs> Not going to play anybody too good in the non-conference. Got to get to those 20 wins. Um, remember the year Creighton won 27 games and didn't make the NCAA tournament? They're like 27 and 5. That's how bad the schedule was. Uh, okay, over-under. Evan, over-under. Over under one. 20, I'm going to tell I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> What's the over under number on the wins it'll take to make the NCAA tournament for Nebraska? Play 44 games. Yeah, that's a great question. It's, I mean, it's unprecedented, right? It's Nebraska has not been in this situation. Like, so like I'm, I'm of the opinion that this is going to impact how many teams the big 10 sends to the postseason. Now, not everyone believes that. Like they, they sent five last year. Nebraska was in one of or I'm sorry, two years ago, I guess in 2019, Nebraska was an at large. Um, and most of those teams made it based on the strength of their non-conference. And so like three of those at large teams, I think their league record two years ago was 15 and nine yeah. in Michigan. If you recall, they, they go to the college world series final. They weren't even a, a guarantee to make the postseason at all. unless they won a couple games at the big 10 tournament in Omaha. So you know, being six games over 500 didn't didn't guarantee you much, uh, just w- in terms of what you did in the league alone. So, you know, 44 games. I don't know, 30, 34, somewhere in that range, maybe. And it depends on who you beat. Like if Nebraska can take a series, or whoever can take a series from Michigan, or take a series from Indiana, uh, that's going to hold a lot more water than sweeping Northwestern, which is going to right. be really bad this year. So, you know, it, it depends on who you beat and, and how everything else shakes out. But the worst case scenario for the big 10 is all these teams beat up on each other. There is like little separation at the top. Your, your, your regular season champ gets the automatic berth. And then like, maybe they throw a bone to somebody else like that. I, I think that's kind of how it's going to go is you're going to have yeah. maybe two teams make it this year. And, you know, as much as we've criticized the big 10 today, their league only decision was about, was about money. That's pretty obvious. The big, t- the uh, baseball is not a revenue generating sport for right. almost every school uh, at the division one level. So it wasn't a priority for them. Um, but yeah, their baseball teams are going to pay for it from a competitive standpoint. I can't tell you how many emails and uh, questions I've had from fans asking why the big 10 won't allow fans to attend outdoor baseball games. Do you know uh, why? Just to keep a uniform policy throughout the sports. And especially like you talk about, they're playing at Round Rock this weekend. They had, there were four teams there last year, big or last week, big 12 SEC teams, big crowds in the exact same venue. Uh, and, and now four big tens or teams are there this weekend. Nobody outside of friends and family. It's just, you, you just, it, it, you, the, big, the big 10 is just in a different world this season in terms of college baseball weekend only no fans, you look around and see these showcase events for other other leagues. It's a totally world sport. except for basketball. Yeah. Because of the money. They, well, they want to make that final four. Sure. There's there. I think basketball is the, is the league sport. I think that there, if anything has been proven true, it's uh, it's that you want to know why th- my theory on why there's more, there's been more big 10 teams in the big 10 tournament or in the NCAA tournament is based on a story Dirk wrote about 10 years ago. You remember that story you wrote there? Yeah. Where Jim, Jim Delaney saber rattled breaking the big 10 off and running a Northern college world series. Yeah. I think that's why I think the NCAA committee is like, all right, all right, all right, all right. we need to put some more big 10 teams in this thing. Cause we're not having, we're not running two of these things. Yeah. It worked too. It was smart. That was, that was old school. Boss politics right there is what that was. That wasn't that wasn't idealism at work. That was if you don't give us more teams, we'll go run our own. I will never for you know, certain interviews you like you always remember. I mean, I've been working at the World Herald for 16 years now. Uh, but but I still remember that interview. I remember where I was, and he was on an exercise bike or a treadmill. Uh, mm-hmm. he was doing the interview while he was working out. And he was really in a mood. I mean, it was, uh, you know, it was exactly what you just said, you know, like, Hey, we don't need you. We'll go, we'll go do this thing in August. You know, it was, yep. <laughs> uh, 
And then the funny part was Harvey Perlman trying to basically defend him. Um, you know, and Harvey hadn't put in nearly the same amount of research that Delaney had. So, well, the dominoes fell after that. I mean, they, they started getting more teams in and, and the, the records didn't dramatically change. Yeah. Well, now, he's not, like, he's not the big 10 commissioner anymore. And I mean, I, it won't surprise me if the NCA penalizes the big 10 pretty significantly. I think so. But, but like we talk a lot about how the big 10 in football is a lot better now than it was 10 years ago when Nebraska yes. joined. Oh yeah. This is the same is true for baseball. I mean, that was a league 10 years ago. It was, it was a facilities wasteland. Yes. And it was about the money. money. It was about, I remember being at the big 10 tournament a few years ago in Omaha and you have all these, the coaches uh, get up there and it's kind of awkward because there aren't a lot of media there. And I, I asked like 80% of the questions it felt like when like they brought in four coaches at a time. But one thing that was really enlightening to me was all these coaches talking about in 2018, I think it was maybe 2019, all the overflow of that BTN money was finally starting to hit the baseball programs, yeah. right? The, the football facilities were, were had been built. Uh, they, they couldn't find a way to spend it. So it starts flowing down to some of those other sports. And so there, there are a lot of other baseball programs in the big 10 in the last seven or eight years that have new facilities that are hiring coaches more at a national level that are more competitive with those salaries. And so that's a big part of it too, is the league is just, a lot better and and and, you know it's it's starting to show up in in the postseason bids too yep okay so they play iowa five times in the next three weeks right yeah twice in minneapolis next weekend and then at iowa city for three after that go figure i was been a pretty good program uh it does does do you kind of sense the season might go one way really good or the other way, uh, based on those games and the games against Ohio State next weekend, there's seven total over the next three weekends against those teams. Yeah, maybe. I mean, Iowa and, and Ohio State are both teams that could conceivably make regionals. I think Iowa's really similar to Nebraska, has a lot back. Ohio State has a ton of arms. I don't know about the offense for those guys, but yeah, I mean, Purdue this weekend, I think if you're Nebraska, you need to win at least three of those games to feel pretty good. Purdue doesn't have much of an offense, and and so I think you really need to start strong this weekend if you're Nebraska. But but yeah, I mean, if you're if you're sub 500 after three weekends, you're in trouble because again, you don't have those non conference wins to fall back on. Like you're you're gonna have to go on a winning streak, and it's just that's all it's about this year is winning ugly, winning pretty. You, you got to win the series. You can't you can't lay any eggs against the Michigan States and the Penn States of the world. And you're playing everybody this year. So there's just no margin for error. And yeah, I think it's just about winning. Like it's just, it's that simple. And, and if they don't, there's nothing else. There's no other measurement by which the NCAA is going to put Nebraska in unless they're winning a bunch of games. Pretty simple. 